and we are live with the Magnetism episode of LSOP Live. And we have a class who's working with us today. It's Mrs. Pites' class over at Bacon Elementary School. And first up, we're going to go over to Mrs. Pites' class. And kids, just to get this out of your system, everybody go crazy. <laughs> That's crazy? You call that crazy, you little rascals? What do you got? <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. And we're going to invite them to come back and do some other things for us later on in the episode. Oh, that was looking more crazy there. That was better. That was better. But first, we're talking about magnetism, and we're over to Rebecca, who's going to set the stage for us. Hi. What do you, you got some compasses there. I do indeed have some compasses, and I have this really cool magnet that has a north pole and a south pole. Oh, my gosh. And when I bring it close to my compasses here, you can see all the the white arrows pointing towards Whoa. the magnet, but they're not actually pointing towards the magnet. They're following the magnetic field. Oh, when you move the magnet, and move it back and forth like really slowly, and we can see those compasses Ooh. are rotating. Oh, that's awesome. And you say they're just following the field of the magnet. Yes, that's also how they work in the real world. What? How so here's a compass. Versions. It's just lining itself up with the Earth's magnetic field? Yes, yes. What? <laughs> Who knew? And if you take that magnet and flip it all the way around? Ooh. Oh. Wow. Wow. Rotating compasses. Yes. So we've established like the little compasses line up with the Earth's magnetic field. But wait, there's more that lines up with magnetic yeah. fields. Over to Emma. Here I've just got some magnetized pins. They're just regular push pins. Um, and then underneath this blue tray, I have like a really, really, really strong magnet that I like. It's so strong I need to keep my phone away from it. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, the magnets are standing up on here because they're in the same way lining up with the magnetic field from the really strong magnet underneath. So even if I lift it up and move it, oh, wow, the like pins That's move awesome. because they're still just lining up with the magnetic field. Oh, that is awesome. And if you hold it steady, and oh, there, there they're dancing. <laughs> That's got some wiggling going on. That is fantastic. And so they, you kind of push them out of alignment, and they wiggle hard to go back into alignment. That is, mm -hmm. that is fantastic. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That is fantastic. But wait, there's more. Inside a piece of iron, there's a whole bunch of little tiny magnets. Iron atoms work like little magnets, and they want to line themselves up with the magnetic field as well. And Ty has got a little demonstration for that. So here we have this little It's like a big nail. A it's big a real nail. big nail. Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to tap it on the magnet here, and it's going to activate that, those oh, yeah. iron atoms. So those iron atoms are all their jostled. And then yeah. when they come back into position, Maybe they're apt to line themselves up with that magnetic field from the magnet. Maybe. Oh my gosh, you just magnetized the nail. I did. You just magnetized and the nail. And then we picked up the magnet. And you picked up a little paper clip there. That is fantastic. Paper clip, yes. So picking up a paper clip. Let's go ahead and pick it up one more time just so we can see. That is definitely magnetic. So you magnetized the, the big steel gutter spike. Yes. Oh my gosh. But it, can you destroy the magnetism? I sure can with a little bit of vibration. Oh my gosh. So I'm just gonna. That looks a little <laughs> scary, Ty. I'm just gonna back up a little bit because Ty is stabbing this big nail real Sorry, hard. Brian. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's for science. <laughs> and then. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think we need to. Oh, you know what? Oh. Let's get this out of the way. Yes. We're gonna get that out of the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> And this is one of the things that, like, it worked in rehearsal. It did. It did work and in now rehearsal. It's not. And, now, and now it's not. That's okay. No. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> if you give it enough of a vibration, you can, in fact, yeah. kill the magnetism of a big nail like that. But it's a, little, it's a little fiddly, particularly when you have so many magnets around to magnetize things against your will. <laughs> now, we know some things that are magnetic, like, oh, magnets. But there's other things in the world that are magnet magnetic, and they're kind of surprising. And over to Rebecca, who's got our first one. I have some really, really cool sand here from the Puda River. And I'm going to take this magnet and I'm going to put it inside this sand. And I just want to show you guys what's going to come out of it. Oh, wow. So you're rubbing I'm, that magnet inside the sand? Yeah. And it looks like, oh my gosh, a whole lot wow. of stuff has stuck to yes. that magnet. And actually, the Poudre River is full of a lot of very magnetic things. And you guys can actually try this at home with some of your magnets and just go outside and see if you can find any dirt or anything that has high levels of iron. And you can do this, too. And that's just, that's just very, very local sand. So they could try yeah. this on the playground. Yes. 
Yes. I'm just saying we we gave them magnets. Mm -hmm. They got playgrounds. Mm -hmm. You could try you could try this right away. That's that's fantastic. It's so cool. That is so cool. But wait, even more surprising than that, Emma's got some a bowl of cereal that's not I just did. because she didn't have breakfast. Mm. <laughs> well, this looks really yummy, but I'm gonna have to pass on eating it because instead we're gonna use it for some science. Oh my gosh. Um, here I have, it's just total cereal, uh, which we know has a pretty high iron content. Um, and if I take this magnet and I stick it in the cereal, which I just crushed up to like a fine powder using a coffee grinder, you can see. Oh my gosh, the wow. cereal is sticking to the magnet. Yeah, the cereal sticks to the magnet because the cereal has a lot of iron in it. And the iron oh, so when they put iron in the cereal, they literally put. Yeah, they literally just put iron in it. <laughs> <laughs> Same with this cereal that I have sitting in this yummy milk. <laughs> so um, cereal. I take the spoon out first. <laughs> Good call. And I, how about using the other end of the magnet that is currently clean? Yeah. There we go. And we take it. So you have the gushy cereal Ugh. with milk. And then what sticks to it is Wonderful. little bits of the gushed yeah. up total. <laughs> Nice soggy cereal magnet. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is fantastic! And so you can, if you're if you're upset about how much iron you're getting with your cereal, you can take some of it out. Yeah, if you really want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. But we have some other things to look at, and Rebecca has got one to show us, which is kind of awesome. Yes, I have money. I know I love money. I hope all of you guys <laughs> like money. <laughs> but I have this really cool magnet, and I have a dollar here, and I just want to show you guys what happens. Look oh at gosh. that. Get that out. And go ahead and do that a couple more times so we can see. Whoa, it's definitely jumping toward the magnet. Yeah. Yes. And this happens because the ink that is used to print money is magnetic, and it's to help with seeing if the money is fake or real. Oh, so you can use that to help detect counterfeit. Yes. That is, awesome. that is kind of awesome. Yeah, and on the same money, money what? thing. What? There's more? There's more money, I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, I have this plate of Canadian coins and um, US coins. I just want to run my magnet over to show you what connects and what doesn't connect. Wow. Look at that. Looks like all the loonies and the toonies are jumping up here, but <laughs> yes. I'm not seeing the quarters and the dimes. All the Canadian money is stuck to my magnet, but there is no American money stuck. And that is because American money, or specifically nickels. Let's try, so American yeah. nickel. American nickel. Let's try that. American nickel, does it stick to a magnet? It doesn't stick. And a Canadian nickel. A Canadian nickel. Not Canadian nickel. Look like there we go. And it sticks. Wow. And oh that gosh. is because Canadian nickels are actually made out of nickels, and American nickels are not made of nickel, which is kind of well, But it's called sneaky. a nickel. Yes, it's sneaky. It's made of zinc. What? Yeah. But the Canadian nickels are actually made out of nickel. Yes. They're sneaky with their naming. <laughs> and a couple, and just a couple quick facts. Like, and most Canadian money has a significant nickel content. And we know iron's magnetic, but nickel is magnetic, too. It's another metal that is strongly magnetic. Mm -hmm. But wait. We gave folks um, Canadian coins as part of their kind of kit, and they're made out of nickel. And actually, a lot of the nickel that you get in Canadian coins comes from a mine in Ontario that is the site of a meteorite fall. So not only are Canadian coins magnetic, they're also partly extraterrestrial. So this is not just from a foreign country. This is from a outside our atmosphere. This is from outer space, mm -hmm. coins from outer space, which is awesome. And there's more with that Canadian nickel. You got oh. a torch over there, Rebecca. Do I we do. trust Rebecca with fire? <laughs> Sorry, trust question. me with fire. I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> I have a nickel that is here on a wire, and there is a magnet right here, and it turns out that when... Let's let Patrick get oh. zoomed in on it, see if he can... Oh. There we go. And we're seeing that nickel is attacked, attracted to that magnet. Yes. And when you heat this nickel up, it... Sorry, it takes it a second. It's getting nice and... T oh, I can see the wire is getting toasty. Yeah. The nickel... There we go. Stop Whoa. being magnetic. Start being magnetic. It Stop stopped. being magnetic. Start yes. being magnetic. It's kind of like <laughs> going back and forth. It can't decide whether it wants to be magnetic or not. <laughs> yes. Got to get it more in the flame. Whoa. Look at that. 
And that happens because when the nickel gets super hot, it loses its magnetic abilities. Oh my gosh. And it's called Curie Point. That is awesome. That is awesome. But nickel is one metal that I didn't know was magnetic until perilously late in my life. But there's another metal that Emma has. Yeah. Where did it go? Oh, the get. We had thought we were. Oh, oh I was, we were just talking about the <laughs> curing point. Sorry, 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 sorry. I don't have it with me. We have a whole other chunk of metal, which is made out of gadolinium. Yeah. That, uh, that, and gadolinium is another metal that's, that's magnetic. No worries. We'll move on. I'm sorry. Past that. We have another thing which is magnetic, which is little iron filings inside. Oh, yeah. Nail polish. Nail polish. And so we're going to have a little spa day over here on the Brian Ty <laughs> side of the table. And we've, we've pre-done this by Ty gave me a nice kind of like top coat or I undercoat did. here with some black nail polish. And now we've got some, ooh, shiny green I nail like polish. This green. That is awesome. All right. That is awesome. And let's see if we can get a close up of the action here. <laughs> All right. Oh, that green is nice. It's very pigmented. <laughs> it, it, it is. But the green, this nail polish also has little iron bits inside it. It sure does. And we're going to test that out. Oh, if you bring a magnet near it? Uh, yes. Oh, I have this my magnet gosh. here. And whoa, it changes. Whoa, whoa. And take the, the tiny one and bring that near. Oh, my gosh. Look, you're making it change. There's definitely the shininess. And if you bring it on that side, can you make it turn all the way dark? Let's see. Oh, oh my gosh, you just made it dark. <laughs> make it light again. I want it light. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there we go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> now it's coming back again. Oh, yeah, if you put the end, I bet the end will make it shiny. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that's shiny. I'm going to go with that right there. I got I a nice that. little shiny pattern. You do. That's going to be perfect for class today. Yes. My students will <laughs> I'm like <excited>. that. Awesome. <laughs> 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 so it's magnetic nail polish. And the way it works is similar to this magnetic view paper that we're going to get a chance to see right about now. But before we get into that, we have to talk about our next feature of magnets that we're looking at, which is that magnets stick together. And Ty and I have a couple of little magnetic hearts here. Here. Yes, we do. And if we push them together this way, oh no, they're pushing apart. <laughs> That's because this is a north pole in my magnet. It's a north pole in your magnet. Oh my goodness. But if oh. you took yours and flipped it around. To the south pole. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now they're sticking together. I heard them buzz. We have a couple of, we each have a pair of these. And these are very strongly magnetic and they're made out of hematite. And it turns out hematite is pretty bouncy. If we take these and pull them a little bit apart and then toss them up in the air, you get a bit of buzz out of them, which is kind of awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I didn't get a clip up. I got to do I got to get this. There that you was go. good. Awesome. That was much better. And now we have other magnets that work like that. Usually we think about magnets as being like a bar magnet. You've got a north pole and you've got a south pole. But it turns out most magnets these days are kind of flat, and they're magnetized along this axis. So for this magnet, the top is a north pole, the bottom's a south pole. And I'm going to give one to Ty. Right. And if we bring these together on the table, there we go. And these magnets, they're pushy apart. <laughs> because mine's a north on the top, yours is a north on the top, mine's a south on the bottom, yours is a south on the bottom, and they push each other apart. But if we flip them over, oh, now they stick yeah. together. And once they've stuck together, Ty has a really awesome thing that she can do. Oh, <laughs> oh goodness. Let's see if we can find, the, uh, find that magnet. Where, where did it go? Oh, no. It probably stuck to something. Yeah. I don't see it. Oh, wait. <laughs> I also do not see it. <laughs> That's okay. We got another magnet here. It's Try this one. Will this, one right. will this one go on the outside? Ooh. Will it? Yes, it will. Can you roll it around? Oh, and yeah. I can. We have a little magnet wheel going on there, a little rolly magnet action going on. Let's see if we can go close up on that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Casey Pites' classroom, and you can do the pushing and the pulling of the magnets, and you can also do the rolling of the magnets. And we want to see some kids doing some science. So, oh, I see them pushing magnets apart on their tabletops. Ooh. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and put in my little earphone here so I can hear the action. Tell me what you folks are seeing. Tell me what you folks are doing. Hey.
Hey, so what do you guys got going on with your magnets over there? Is someone making them connect? Oh, someone's doing one on top of the table and another magnet inside the t under the table? That's kind of awesome. Wow. It goes, oh, so the magnetic field goes through your finger and it goes through your desk. That is kind of awesome. And if folks tried the rolling magnet thing, if you take them and you put them, take those two magnets and put them together, you can do a rolly thing like Ty did. <laughs> Awesome, fantastic. Well, we're going to come back into the studio and look at yet another kind of magnet. We've got some refrigerator magnets, and everybody here has got a couple of refrigerator magnets, okay? And Rebecca's got something to share I with us about some. the refrigerator magnets. I have my little fridge here. And it's not really <laughs> like a fridge, a, it's a box, but it's made out of metal, a fridge. Just like a fridge. Yes, and I'm going to stick my magnet on this way with the logo facing towards the camera. And notice how it sticks and how it stays up. But when I flip it around with the logo facing towards me, it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. So this magnet is only sticky on one side? Yeah. What? How does that happen? You're lying. Happen? You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a quick explanation of how this goes. And I'm going to show one thing here. Ty and I have this thing here. We have a horseshoe magnet and we have a pan. And if you look at the horseshoe magnet, it's going to stick to the pan. Like you can actually pick up the pan if you hang on to it. Oh, yeah. So horseshoe magnet is sticky on that side because there's a north pole and a south pole. That's the sticky side. Ty, if you put it on the other side, if you flip it over, and go ahead and hang uh -oh. on, pick, pull it, push it over and then hold on to it. Not Nothing. sticky. Turn it the other way. Lame, not sticky. It is sticky. <laughs> it is sticky. Awesome. It is sticky. And the key is, inside these refrigerator magnets, if you took a side view of one of them, like this, what's inside here is a whole bunch of magnets that are like this. There's a North Pole and a South Pole and a whole bunch next to each other that are like this. So on this side, I got a lot of magnetic poles. And on the white side, I get this end. I got the not sticky side of the magnet. And we can see this with the magnet view paper. And Ty has got a sheet of magnet view paper. I sure do. And this magnet view paper works just like the nail polish. So Ty, it if you does. take one and put it down with the logo side up, and we look at that magnet view paper, what we see is? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Which is kind of disappointing, but <laughs> I'm going to flip it, and I put it down. Oh, wow. now that's good. No, Lots yeah. of that looks poles. Cool. Lots of poles. And you can see that's an alternating North Pole, South Pole pattern. So if we take our two magnets, you got a refrigerator magnet, I, I got a refrigerator do. magnet. If we put them logo to logo. Nothing. Lame. Lame. I know. Lame. Boo. But if we put them like dark side to dark side, they work, but check this out. This way. It's pretty slidey. How about this way? Oh, it's buzzing. Ooh, it is buzzy. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Totes buzzy. Totes buzzy, yeah, exactly, exactly. But wait a minute. Didn't we, in the kits that we gave to classes, didn't we give them some refrigerator magnets? We did. <laughs> and so we, we, folks can try that if you'd like. Take one and work with a partner. And then you can go back and forth, and you can kind of like do this ah. little buzzing magnet thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, and, <laughs> and Rebecca are doing a little magnet tug of war. That's so fun. <laughs> Emma's whoop, <laughs> just stole my magnet. <laughs> One of the things we like to do in Little Shop of Physics is make things bigger. Now we're going over to Casey Pites' class again, and they've got a giant sheet of refrigerator magnet over there. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a little magnet tug of war. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my earpiece here. All right. And that's Heather from the Little Shop of Physics. And they got two giant refrigerator magnets trying to pull them apart. 
And what happens is, oh my gosh, those kids are pulling as hard as they can. Come on, you guys, you got this. You got this. Uh, uh. Not working. Wow. <laughs> darn, darn. But wait a minute. Is there a way we could make it so it would work? Is there a way you could pull them apart? All right, and they are still, still, the, oh, that wow. made it go. Now, is there a way you can put them together so they don't stick? <laughs> oh, yeah. So if we put them on the other side, let's try that. And then if we do a tug of war, oh, man, they don't oh, even man. stick. They don't even stick. Awesome. <laughs> and that's just a giant version of what we did in a small scale in the studio. Well done, well done. And now we're going to talk more about the stickiness of magnets, and we're over to Rebecca. And Rebecca's got some little bits of hardware and a really strong magnet. Yes, a very, very strong magnet. But we established that some magnets are really sticky. This magnet, I'm going to show you guys something cool. Whoa, so that's clearly magnetic. Those wow little bits of hardware there. They're all stuck together, but they're not sticky they're to not the magnet. Sticky. Like if you touch it to the magnet, you can pull it away? Yeah. What? It's because this magnet is not super, super sticky. It is, it has a very strong magnetic field, but not a super strong stickiness. Oh, awesome. And Rebecca, could you try something else? If you take that magnet, and I've not asked you to do this before, tip it up on its edge. Like the magnet. <laughs> the mag, okay. You took the mag and then try putting it on the side. Oh, okay. Now try to lift the nuts off. Whoa. Oh, oh, now they, now. Now it's sticky. Not sticking to each other. And it's a lot harder for it to pull oh, it off. Yeah. No, too. it wants to stick on that side. So they're sticky on the sides. But not on the individual not on the poles, yeah. Not on the individual poles. And the magnets that we've gave folks as part of this kit that we shared with schools work that way. Mm -hmm. Each face of the little magnets that we gave to kids is a, is a pole. So this one right here, there's a north pole, the dimpled side, and the other side is a south pole. And so these magnets are much stickier on the sides than they are on the top. And the thing that Rebecca was doing with the little bits of hardware, you can do that with your little magnet yes. here as well. And Rebecca, there's one other thing we can do with this. I I have this over the thing. I wonder what happens if I take it off the oh magnet. Oh my gosh, if we take the magnet away? Oh! Whoa. Whoa, whoa, they don't stick together anymore. They don't once, stick together anymore. Once they're away from the magnet, they lose that order. Yeah, oh, <laughs> they fall everywhere. Fall apart. And let's see if we're going to go one more time back to Mrs. Pites' class, and let's see if these folks have some little bits of hardware, and they're making their own little magnetic sculptures. Oh, yeah, I see a lot of artistic efforts here. Awesome. And they are engaged. And we got some little structures taking shape there. And we're hopeful that folks in other classrooms are doing the same. Awesome, awesome. All right, back to the studio, and we have one more stickiness of magnets demonstration, and this is perhaps the most exciting one. And Ty, tell us what you got here. This here is a Gauss <laughs> rifle. A Gauss rifle. That sounds a little scary. I am loud. You're not going to shoot Patrick, are you? <laughs> <laughs> just a little, out, just okay. a little on the side of him. Okay, okay, just on the side of Patrick. <laughs> but so these magnets. So, so this is the ones here with the tape. Those are your magnets, right? Yes. And then these things are just little steel balls. They sure are. And so, if you look at these steel balls, they don't stick to each other. Oh, whoa, sorry, I just kind of... Sorry, like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. If it's we could all right. Get back, I, kind of, I kind of messed things up, but let's reset this. Here we if got we could. our S and we got our L. Oh, my gosh, we got S, we have an L. It's going to spell slop unless we're careful. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Ty. It's all like, good. Here's this one that goes here. All right. And this one goes here. All right, so Ty, show us what we got. Okay, so I'm just going <laughs> to... Oh. <laughs> so we kind of loaded that with some energy. We and let's did. Do that. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to shoot one more block. All and right. Show us how you set it up. Okay, so from the tape, the magnets, they have to have three on one side, 
Uh -huh. and zero on this other one. So, oh, so you're taking that steel ball off the magnet when it does not want to come off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Awesome. I don't awesome, know. awesome. And we, you can pull one off the end. Okay, That's yeah. going to work just fine. And, and then, then that one wants to come in and it hits the other. We get a collision. It wants to hit that magnet. Plus magnetism. <laughs> and we get quite the shot right there. <laughs> yes. That is kind of awesome. So that's one way that you can use magnets to produce some motion. But we have another way. Ty's got a motor over here. I sure do. And if you want to make a motor, one thing you need is some electrical current. And the second thing that you need is, what else do you need to make a motor, Ty? I got some electrical current. You got your quite your electric power supply here, which will make us a good current. I do. What else do we need? You need magnets. You need magnets. Yes. So I'm just going to open up this motor here, and I'll show you all. Oh, so inside that motor... This is a magnet. I don't believe that's a magnet. You have to prove uh, it to I'll me. I'll show I'm a you, doubter. Brian. I'm a doubter. Oh, okay. So this <laughs> big magnet inside yes. the motor. Is that true for, like, every motor? There's magnets inside there? I do believe there it is, yes. Awesome, awesome. But wait, we gave some people some parts to make their own motors, and I think we're over to Emma, who's going to show us how to make a really, really simple and sweet motor. Yeah, so teachers, a lot of you should have a one-and-a-half-volt battery, a Canadian nickel, I think? A Canadian coin. Canadian, of some Canadian coin of some kind that we know is magnetic, <laughs> and these two itty-bitty magnets that kind of make a line. And making this motor is super easy. You're just going to stick the magnets to the coin. The coin just serves as a base to help it balance. Um, and then place the battery on top of the magnets with the negative side on the, on the magnets. Oh, yeah, so you got a little balancing post there. Mm -hmm. And then you all should have a copper wire. And if you bend this wire um, in a way where you're going to make a complete circuit, so part of it, like the top of it, should be touching this positive end of the battery, and the bottom of it needs to be touching the magnet. And if you do that, and you get it to bend in the, in the, in the right way. And you, um, you pre-bend, didn't you? Yeah, I Let's do. Because <laughs> sometimes it takes some time. But here I have a, a little heart. It's a heart. Aww. It's a little spinning That's heart. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Maybe not a properly balanced heart. And that's something, if you've got the parts, you can make your own little homopolar motor. That is fantastic. Oh, no. <laughs> that is fantastic. Fun stuff. And they can make any shape. But we found the heart shape was kind of mm -hmm. the... It's the easiest. Heart shape, heart shape was kind of an and easy... And it looks the coolest. And again. it looks pretty cool. One other thing that uses magnets is speakers. And Ty and I have this little thing over here. And this is a real strong magnet right here on the table. We'll let Patrick get come in close on that. So here's a speaker. And uh, uh, we took it apart. There's a magnet inside it with a north pole and a south pole. And there's a little coil of wire right here. Now Ty is going to play some music. And let's go ahead and send it to the output. All right. All right, so now the current is going into this little coil, but I don't hear anything until I put it on top of the magnet. Wow! <laughs> and then if I put the cone on it, not bad, not bad. And this is Vivaldi's spring, Gotta right? Gotta love this, of it. Course, this is spring That's awesome. appropriate. Yeah, it is. Because this spring is the spring break. Spring break. Spring break. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder if the students are as excited about spring break as we are. I I'm hope so. Yeah. I'm, I'm, betting, I'm betting that they are. And we do that. We're making music basically with magnetism. With a little, oh, we had a little magnet collision right there. And one more type of motor. We're going to see this is kind of a linear motor that Emma has going on yeah. over here. Whoops. Oh. Knocked down all my magnets. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just have like a big giant screw here. And it's, um, this is a solenoid. And if I turn it on, you can see that like nothing's happening right now. But if I turn it on and start putting some electricity through it. Oh, oh my wow. God. <laughs> that yanked it into the corner. Yeah, it did. Yes. <laughs> do it one more time. We'll do it one more time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and where have people seen this in their lives before? Lots of door, locks. door locks. Door locks. Door locks. Your door. car door locks. You push a button and the the, and the lock goes doink. <laughs> That's fine. Does it go that fast? Yeah. Oh yeah, mine do. <laughs> With some force, I have to say. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a wrap on our magnetism episode. Two things we want to thank. 
Mrs. Pites' class in Bacon Elementary School. Yay, thank you, thank you for you folks. There they are. And are you folks as excited about spring break as we are? Yes, yeah. they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> we want to thank all the other Puda School District schools who took part. We want to thank all of our viewers. And thanks to Laura Grissom with the Puda School District who connects us to schools and helps us make all this happen. Thanks to Rebecca and Emma and Ty for my partners in this adventure. And for Patrick and Adam behind the scenes. We'll see you next time on Little Shop Live. <laughs>